It's Tuesday, June 25th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, is Edward Snowden a double agent? Naomi Wolf and Webster Tarpley asked that question. And counterterrorism head Richard Clark says the Hastings accident is consistent with a car cyber attack. And we show you a blast from the past. Alex Jones confronts the DMV on biometrics and blood draws all the way back in the 1990s. All this and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight, we're asking the question, is Edward Snowden a double agent? Because several prominent voices on the left are speculating that the truth behind the former CIA analyst and NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden could be more convoluted. The likes of Webster Tarpley and Naomi Wolf are embracing the notion that Edward Snowden is somehow too good to be true and that what he's doing must be part of a wider plot that actually serves to benefit the intelligence agencies and the NSA, or as Webster Tarpley calls it, a limited hangout. Something that distracts, according to the likes of Wolf and Tarpley, from, you know, the real level of criminality in NSA spying and also serves as a means of redirecting attention away from other issues, such as the impending escalation of the war in Syria as the U.S. prepares to arm the rebels. So is Edward Snowden a double agent? Is he a shill? Is this all staged, this chase across the globe from from uh, Hong Kong to Russia onto Ecuador as we expect him to go. Well, Naomi Wolf's central point that she makes in her article, my creeping concern that the NSA leaker Edward Snowden is not who he purports to be, is, quote, some of Snowden's emphases seem to serve an intelligence police state objective rather than to challenge them. She goes on to state, real whistleblowers are completely focused on their act of public service and trying to manage the jeopardy to themselves and their loved ones. They don't tend to ever call attention to their own self-sacrifice. That is why they are heroes, among other reasons. But a police state would like us all to think about everything we would lose by standing up against it. That's what she says Snowden is primarily doing with his rhetoric. Quote, it's actually in the police state's interest to let everybody know that everything you write or say everywhere is being surveilled and that awful things happen to people who challenge this. She also draws attention to Snowden's slick media presentation skills uh, and makes the illusion that he's been professionally briefed on his talking points. And while... You know, no one is above suspicion. We know for years there have been rumors about the true motivations behind Julian Assange. I think there's a tendency amongst people in the alternative media to believe that nobody could ever sacrifice everything and stand up for what's right, as Snowden has apparently done, without it somehow being staged or scripted. There's always this kind of suspicion behind these individuals. And my skepticism of the claim that Snowden is some kind of double agent is borne out by the fact that from personal experience, virtually every day I read messages from people saying, you know, Alex Jones works for Israel, Alex Jones works for the CIA, Alex Jones works for Stratfor, because some people find it easier, more palatable to invent conspiracies about Alex rather than accepting the fact that he's the real deal, because it makes Alex's success in what he does easier to swallow for those who find themselves frustrated by their lack of success. So there's this kind of defeatist loser mentality that those who stand up for freedom and are successful or those who, you know, merely attract media attention for standing up for liberty can't possibly be doing it for the right reasons, can't possibly be genuine and real. So unless we have clear evidence that Edward Snowden is a double agent or a shill, and from what I've read out of both Naomi Wolf and Webster Tarpley, that evidence has not been forthcoming you know, let's get behind Snowden. Let's support what he stands for. Let's give people who risk their livelihoods for freedom the benefit of the doubt. Because if we constantly attempt to tear down icons of liberty, then we're only doing the establishment's work for them. And as George Orwell said, the further a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. So again, it's an analysis in not believing that somebody could be real simply because they successfully stand up for liberty. We need to be more positive, more optimistic, and get behind individuals like Edward Snowden. And staying with Snowden news, this is out of RT. 
Putin, Snowden still in Moscow airport transit zone, won't be extradited. Russia's president says former NSA contractor Edward Snowden is still in the transit zone of Moscow's Sheremetyevo airport. Vladimir Putin says that any accusations of Russia related to Snowden are, quote, nonsense and rubbish. Speaking to journalists in Finland, Putin said there is no extradition treaty between Russia and the US. He also said that Snowden did not commit any crime on the territory of Russia. So, of course, we had the bait and switch yesterday with the uh, journalist boarding the plane to Havana, expecting Snowden to be on it. He wasn't, and for a time nobody knew where he was. Now he's apparently still in the Russian airport. Looks like he'll eventually make his way to Ecuador, where he'll be offered political asylum. Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, has come out all guns blazing again today, rejecting US demands that they turn in Snowden. But the ace in the hole, as far as the United States is concerned, and this is something that Mike Adams discussed in his article yesterday out of Natural News, is the fact that wherever Snowden ends up, don't expect Washington to have any respect for the rule of law in their efforts to throw him in a dungeon like they did with Bradley Manning. Because the US government has a history of conducting covert abductions of American citizens in Ecuador, including, as Adams denotes in this article, Greg Caton, who was kidnapped by US authorities, bundled on a plane back to Miami in 2009 after being put on an Interpol list alongside war criminals and international murderers, all for the crime of selling an anti-cancer rainforest herb. So they won't hesitate to break these rules to get their man. Don't expect them to play by the rule book in the pursuit of Edward Snowden. And in fact, he'd probably be safer holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in Moscow than he would in Ecuador itself, because obviously US authorities are less likely to invade Russian territory than they are Ecuadorian territory. So we'll continue to track Edward Snowden, but staying with NSA news, this is out of Infowars.com. Congress insisted they be kept in the dark on NSA spying. Congress insisted it be kept in the dark on the NSA surveillance programs recently revealed by Edward Snowden. According to Dick Cheney, Darth Cheney, who approached lawmakers with an invitation for them to pro provide more oversight back in 2004, but was told by Congress, absolutely not. I said, do you think we ought to come back to the Congress in order to get more formal authorization? And they said, absolutely not. Everybody, Republican, Democrat said, don't come back up here. It will leak. That's what they told Dick Cheney when he actually offered Congress the option to provide oversight to investigate the very same NSA surveillance programs now causing a global scandal. So nine years before it emerged, with the revelations of Edward Snowden, congressional leaders were asked by Cheney if they wanted to provide oversight. They said, absolutely not. Every one of them gave a green light for the NSA to continue violating the Fourth Amendment. They were, quote, unanimous that it should continue. And so is it really any wonder that just 6% of Americans, according to recent polls, think Congress is doing a good job? Their very reason for existence is to be a check and balance against federal government abuse. And in this instance, and in many others, they instead acted as a rubber stamp for government abuse. Nine years later, this becomes a global scandal because Congress was perfectly happy to give the government a blank check. And we know why. It's the same people who are now calling for Snowden's arrest that gave the green light to the NSA back nine years ago. The likes of John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Feinstein, Pelosi, they're all compromised, they're all in on it, and they're all in complete violation of the oath they swore to uphold and protect the Constitution by allowing this illegal NSA spying to continue, and in fact giving it the rubber stamp nine years ago, according to Dick Cheney. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. 
Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.